So it seems that our approach to Niger and our approach to this junta is divided and disconnected. These uh, layered threats that we have across the Sahel are actually fueled by the Russian Federation. I mean, we've spent more than 500 million in the country. What can you say we've got for that 500 million as we sit here today? If it's like being turned into an Iranian mine, the Russians are the preferred security partner, and, and we're training the coup leaders. Africa is not merely important, is it, it is essential. Africa. Greetings and welcome to Africa is Powerful English Channel. The cancellation of the mutual security pact by the ruling military junta in Niger has sent shockwaves through the United States and raised serious concerns about the country's future influence in West Africa. U.S. policymakers are now in a state of emergency, scrambling to assess the situation's ramifications and avoid being expelled from the region. This move by Niger's military junta presents a clear and immediate threat to American interests in the region, with fears that other countries, such as Russia, could take advantage of the power vacuum created by the U.S. withdrawal. Remember, the junta already expelled French troops last December, following a coup in July of 2023 that toppled the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. The United States is gravely concerned about the potential loss of its military bases in Niger, as this could lead to the country falling under Russian influence, similar to neighboring nations Burkina Faso and Mali. The Wagner Group, a mercenary army linked to the Kremlin and formerly led by Yevgeny Prigozhin, has established a presence in Niger's neighboring states and several other African nations, raising concerns about the extent of Russia's growing influence in the region. In an attempt to maintain cooperation and prevent Niger from falling under Russian and Iranian influence, U.S. officials made overtures to the junta earlier this year. However, on March 15th, during a national television address, the junta's spokesman, Colonel Amadou Abdramane, declared the U.S. presence in Niger illegal and described the visit by Mali Fee, the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, as counterproductive. Abdramani's comments were apparently prompted by accusations from U.S. officials that Niger had been conducting negotiations to allow Iran access to its uranium reserves, a highly concerning development that could enable Tehran to expand its nuclear program. Abdraman strongly denied the allegations and stated that the government of Niger was ending the security pact with immediate effect. In response, U.S. officials have claimed to have detected a flexibility in Niger's stance, suggesting that the junta's hardline posture may still be open to negotiation. Please take a moment to listen to the video, as it provides valuable insights. The content presented in the video is essential for understanding the subject matter at hand. I highly recommend that you watch it to gain a better understanding of the topic. Uh, focusing on Niger, clearly we bet big. Okay, we bet big on Niger, and right now we're in, uh, we're at a point in which we either want to double down or we want to fold, unfortunately. And look, I get the bet, as I called it in my visits there, it was the Alamo in an area that I've also now called an uh, area of deja coups, seems to be happening often. But now we're dealing in Niger with a military junta, a military junta that is basically kicking out our partners. It kicked out France. It revoked a security pact with the EU. And now, unfortunately, the regional security coalitions in that area, ECOWAS, ACRA, G5, let's be frank, they lack strength, they lack credibility. And then after the meeting that you were at General Langley with Assistant Secretary Fee, soon after, they kicked they ended the security pact with the United States, unfortunately, or at least that's their intention at this point. Now, I appreciate the direct and frank conversations that you had with the junta at that point, talking about Russia, talking about the potential agreement to sell uranium to I Iran, but unfortunately it appeared it backfired, backfired based on their statement. Now at the same time, during all of this, the United States has formally declared a coup back in October that legally prevents the United States from providing the new regime with security assistance. So it seems that our approach to Niger and our approach to this junta 
is divided and disconnected. And it's sort of a two-prong approach in that one, I get it. We want to support our democracy and our values, but two, we're trying to be friendly with this junta. And it's leading to a point where we have a kind of a, a judgment of Solomon and that we're splitting the goals. And what we don't want is it to leave us with nothing because we know that nothing will be filled by China, by Russia, by Iran. We also know that the, uh, the VEOs, the violent extremist organizations, are not going to stop in Niger. There's going to be consequences throughout the Sahel. As the DNI put out its threat, its annual threat assessment last, in, uh, I think it was uh, recently, the instability in Sahel is going to raise, especially in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, raises the likelihood that the crisis will metastasize and spill over to the littorals of Africa. And so my question to Doctor, my question to General Langley, is what is our coherent and consistent strategy towards Niger? And what do we plan to do to prevent Russia, China, and Iran from filling that void? And what do we plan to do in order to continue our effort, which I think is necessary, to go after the VEOs in that area? Thank you, Congressman. I think you've framed the dilemma and the challenges extremely well, and I fully agree with your assessment. I would like to clarify that uh, at this point, the CNSP, the uh, self-identified government of Niger, has not uh, asked uh, or demanded that the United States military depart. Uh, there is actually quite a mixed message. Um, we are following up and seeking clarification. What they have declared is that they have uh, declared the SOFA, the Status Forces Agreement, right. uh, to be uh, non-operational. They have assured us that American military forces are protected and they will take no action that would endanger them. So while we work through that with them, uh, we are uh, seeking ways to be able to continue continue to have access and ability to conduct counter VEO operations. That said, I will just foot stomp something you mentioned, which is uh, countries that are run by military juntas are not reliable security partners, and part of the value proposition for us having access in Niger would be a return to democratic civilian rule in Niger. Got it. General Langley. Congressman, I'll just give a, an operational uh, viewpoint uh, as far as, because this is this is a question of uh, strategic access uh, at the glo uh, great power uh, competition level. It's essential. It's essential that uh, we double down uh, with uh, within the, the authorities that we still have at their imposition of 7008. But I would just take a regional view on that. Uh, we do need to engage with other countries to increase their partnership and capacity. Uh, we need uh, more, take, uh, take, take the uh, disinformation uh, campaign, we need to hit it uh, uh, front and center, front and center, because Russia does have a passing game. Now they have a, uh, a ground game as well with the Russian core and uh, being introduced in Mali, being the gentleman's time has expired. Chair, and I recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates. This is uh, Colonel Mamade Dumbuya, and this is a photo of, of him. Did we train and equip him? By name, I, I cannot identify that. Well, that's him with a bunch of U.S. service members outside of our embassy. And just months after this photo was taken in 2021, he led a coup in Guinea and, and threw out the, the leader. Does that concern you? Congressman, core values is what we start off with in IMA pr programs. Do we, we share core values with Colonel Dembuya? Core values. I will repeat that. He let it go. We do. So I guess my, uh, I guess four months after that exchange, General Langley, you had General Musa Bamu overthrow the government in Niger. And it won't surprise anybody here that we trained him. The person who overthrew the democratically elected government in Niger went to the National Defense University, trained at Fort Benning, Georgia. So do we share core values with Musa Bamu? Congressman, let me just go ahead and state that uh, core values is what we start off with. But there is no syllabus for overthrowing a government, not in our institutions. Well, they're learning it pretty well, even in the absence of a syllabus, right? Because if you look at Chad, Burkina Faso, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, in a lot of these countries, the coup is led by someone we trained. 
Now, I put in the National Defense Authorization Act a requirement for you to issue us a report as to how many coup leaders our taxpayers have funded the training for. That report is due tomorrow. Will we be getting it on time? I'll do a follow-up on that, Congressman. Well, I mean, this, this was the follow-up, right? Because first I asked you in that clip, how many coup leaders did we train? You didn't know. And so then I put it in the law for you to tell me. The law requires you to tell me by tomorrow. So can you give us a preview of coming attractions? Uh, you get that. You'll get your answer, uh, Congressman. Just, but, but, but let me say, let me say, there's no correlation and there's no causation of U.S. training to these members. Well, that's what I'm trying to find out, because in like a dozen countries, the coup leaders are people we trained. Like, what a difference a year makes. March 16th, 2023, Secretary Blinken calls Niger, quote, a model of resilience, a model of democracy, a model of cooperation. One year and one day later, Dr. Wallander, the spokesperson of the Nigeri military, Colonel Amadou Amabrame, says, quote, the American presence in the territory of the Republic of Niger is illegal. A, a year and a day after our government said they were the model of resilience and democracy, they are throwing us out by the scruffs of our neck. And so is it safe to say that this failed, General Langley? It's safe to say that there's no correlation or causation of U.S. training to a coup happening, well, uh, period. It certainly isn't. There's no causation or correlation to the training we do creating more stability. I'm trying to ascertain whether or not all this money we spend in Africa makes the place less stable or more stable. And just for a country lawyer like me, if we're funding the coup leaders, that probably strikes me as making it less stable. Now, are you aware of the Iranian efforts to now mine in Niger? General Langley? Congressman, we could talk about it in a classified section on that. Well, I mean, Fox News is reporting it. They're saying that Iran is working on, on economic arrangements to get uranium from Niger. So... Well, in a classified session, we'd talk uh, real intel. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, we've spent more than 500 million in the country. What can you say we've got for that 500 million as we sit here today? If it's like being turned into an Iranian mine, the Russians are the preferred security partner, and, and we're training the coup leaders. There was a, a buy down on uh, an insurance policy for protecting uh, the homeland. I don't think we're doing that, though. I, I don't think there's, a, there's that's, evidence to suggest that. That's like, your opinion. You, you went to Niger. I respect, I respect okay. your opinion. Okay, but I General Langley, not. you went to Niger. And, and you went to have a meeting with the people we trained who overthrew the democratically elected government, and Fox News is reporting that you didn't even get a meeting with the principal decision maker. Is that right? I had a meeting with my counterpart. Well, uh, here's the quote. Sources say last week's meeting with the junta was extremely difficult. The administration's envoys did not get to meet with Niger's principal decision maker. Is that a true statement or is that a false statement? My responsibility is to meet with my counterpart, not not not. I, I would not just hope that if we're training two leaders, gentlemen's we could at least book a meeting. You know, since it's the model of democracy. Gentlemen's so, time's expired. Chair, I'll move to you, General Langley. I want to talk. I want to talk about Africa. I want to talk specifically about Niger. The U.S. has spent hundreds of millions of dollars in that country, invested in that country. Less than a year ago, it was one of our strongest partners. Uh, we are now being, uh, as I understand it from the open source reporting, pushed out of the country and they have uh, turned towards Russia. Uh, can you just outline for me how this partnership fell apart so fast? I mean, so fast, and then how was the Russian military able to so quickly become, if you will, Niger's apparently partner of choice now. And, and it's baffling to me that we just totally missed this from the standpoint of our intelligence community. Um, how, what indicators were there that we missed? Congressman, uh, thanks for your question, and also thank you for getting down onto the continent and uh, even going into Niger. 
and looking uh, uh, at some of their uh, members of their government and look at them in the face and assess uh, where they were in their democracy. Well, I would say just in answer to the question is holistic. Uh, as we saw, uh, the dominoes fall. When I did my assessment, I said, yeah, uh, across the Sahel, all these countries are at a tipping point. Uh, Mali had already fell. Burkina Faso, as I took command, had already fell. And uh, sat there uh, 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 over a year ago, uh, over there at the, uh, the Gaylord, where we had the 30th anniversary of the SPP. And uh, one of the general officers from Niger, as we're sitting there with uh, uh, General Lyles from Indiana, said, uh, we are an island of stability in a sea of chaos. You can depend on us. So I would say, uh, what was what actually stoked that the drivers of uh, that's what I laid out on the uh, regional dis disinformation campaign. Uh, the Russian Federation uh, had their playbook. They had their passing game uh, through their disinformation uh, campaign years ago, seven years ago. You only had about 200 uh, folks across the continent of Africa that were on the internet. Now there's 600 million. Very compelling across civil society, but moreover, very very compelling in their militaries right now, driving uh, uh, and putting a wedge between what we teach, law of armed conflict, uh, civilian-led governance, I think is failing because it's being drowned out. And that's where I ask for more capabilities in the State Department, in their, in their uh, Global Engagement Center, and also in our information operations uh, in the military. So, so the number that you gave, approximately three times the number of people that are engaged in social media in the United States are engaged in social media in Africa. I watched, I watched as the Russians, it was Wagner Group at the time, but Russians, whatever, they're one and the same, right? Um, French ISR picked up a mass grave in Mali, I believe it was, and before the French were able to convince the government of Mali or share the intel with them that what Wagner had done, Wagner had used social media to convince the public that it was the French that had done it. Is that, is that am I correct in that? That's how savvy they are, uh, um, Congressman. They're very savvy, and uh, we need to step up our game as far as uh, being able to reveal uh, what their activities are in the disinformation. Gentlemen's time I agree with one Here now recognize the gentleman General. from California. Aside from the Wagner group, are the militaries of China and Russia directly involved in Africa? Yes, Congressman, I'll start with the most pressing and immediate acute threat right now across the Sahel. Uh, I would say some of the activities, uh, layered threats that we have across the Sahel are actually fueled by the Russian Federation. And I say this because uh, given the demise of Vigeny Pogosian, we thought that the, uh, the Bogner group was going to demise in, in, uh, on, on the continent, but it's gone in the other direction because now they're sponsored by uh, the uh, MOD of the Russian Federation. That's a concern. And I would note that the migration from that... In any case, may I ask for your opinion on this matter? If you found this content informative, please consider subscribing and sharing it with others. Furthermore. We would appreciate it if you could leave your thoughts on this subject in the comments section below. Thank you in advance for your participation.